But, you know, Ellis was a psychotherapist who was trained in psychoanalysis, you know, based mm-hmm. on the theories of Freud. Uh, and for the maybe the first half of the 20th century, those ideas really kind of ruled in the field of psychiatry and clinical psychology. And kind of the key idea was, if you're messed up as an adult, it's because something traumatic happened when you were a child, right? Mm. And they're going to use these methods where you're going to try to tap into your unconscious and tell us about your dreams, your childhood memories, and so forth, uh, uh, to get the root of the problem. So it's kind of like the focus was on externals, what mm. happened to you in the outside. Now, in the field of psychology itself, the behaviorists held the sway at the time. People probably heard of people like uh, Pavlov and his dogs, you know. Yeah. Maybe John Watson, another American behavioral psychologist, or B.F. Skinner, and all of his theories of re- positive reinforcement or reward mm-hmm. and punishment and all that. But but those models were, were based on a stimulus response model. Again, something external happens in the outside world, and that produces a, an emotional response within us. Mm-hmm. And we typically tend to, to think this way. Somebody does something to us we don't like, and we might say, you made me angry. You know, it's stimulus and response. Your act produced my anger. Hmm. Well, here's where Ellis uh, kind of builds on Epictetus' idea that people are disturbed not by things, but by the views or their beliefs or the judgment about those things. Hmm. He takes that stimulus response pattern of the of the behaviors. Oh, I, I should backtrack just a little bit too. It occurred to Ellis himself that, according to the, the, the psychoanalysts, it, it can be true that childhood traumas set you up for disturbance later in life. There's no doubt about that. He said, but if you are disturbed because of some trauma that happened as a child, it's mainly because what you keep telling yourself today about that trauma. And if Mm. you can train yourself to interpret it differently, to judge it differently, then you can remove some of the emotional effects of that trauma uh, and move on in life. Mm. And in terms of the stimulus response model, Ellis just recast this a little bit into this ABC model, which I find is very effective once a person kind of gets the, the gist of it and starts to practice it. So... Let me give an example, one that he himself gives. I find one of the most graphic examples. He says, well, imagine you're in a crowded bus. A humongous man walks right past you, stands squarely on your big toe and smashes it, walks right on by without saying a word, right? Mm. So in the old stimulus response model, the stimulus, huge guy squashes your toe, response, your toe hurts, and you're you know maybe as mad as hell, right? You're angry. Mm. So in Ellis's terminology, he just transforms that a little bit. The stimulus becomes an A, an activating event. Mm -hmm. Okay, the response, the pain, the emotional response, the anger becomes the C, the consequence, the consequence Mm. of that activating event. And normally we think if you thought only in stimulus response term, we'd say, well, yeah, that activating event caused that consequence. The big guy stands on my foot, I'm angry. Well, Ellis says, now imagine this, though. Imagine that guy walks on by, you notice he's wearing very thick, dark glasses and has a white cane. Mm. In other words, okay, that guy's blind. So, you know, now you realize, well, he didn't mean to do that. So your toe is still going to hurt, but hopefully you're not going to be angry at him. Mm. You know, ho- hopefully if you're a person uh, who, who's trying to live the life of virtue, you might even admire him, that he's able to get out there and do mm. what he has to, you know, being blind. Okay, so one of the elements of cognitive rational therapies, and also stoicism, is to make sure that your interpretations of events are accurate, that they line up with reality, that they're true. So in that case, if we saw his king, we'd say, well, no, it wasn't true. He didn't mean to do that. So I'm not going to be angry at him. But of course, it goes farther than that, both Mm. in cognitive therapy and in the stoics, because it's possible that this big guy did it on purpose. Maybe he likes to crunch people's toes. Some people actually <laughs> like to cause other people pain. And mm-hmm. if they're big and powerful, they might think it's funny to do it to a person who can't, probably not going to try to do anything back to them, right? Mm-hmm. But, but here, Ellis drawing from the Stokes was like, even there, your toe's still going to hurt, but you don't have to be incapacitated by anger. You don't have to let this ruin your day or disturb you. He says, you know, you might, you'll be reasonably annoyed. You're not going to like that. But you don't have to let it devastate you. You can change your belief. You could say, you know, I, I kind of pity that man that he thinks that's an appropriate way to live in the world. But mm. I know that it's not. And I know I can bear some degree of pain. So I'm going to go on, you know, uh, despite it. I'm not going to let it devastate me. So so in general, again, activating event is like a stimulus. The mm. C is the consequence, like the response. What we're focusing on is that belief in the middle, mm. Okay, that, that judgment about what happened. And then Alice adds two other letters. A D and an E. For the D, he says, dispute 
that your initial belief, you know, oh, this guy's a jerk. Oh, I need to do something about it. Dispute that. Did he really mm -hmm. mean it? Do I really need to get angry over it, even if he did it, right? You dispute that. He said, and if you can reframe that, if you can change that view, then it can lead you to E, which is a new emotional response, hmm. you know, where, where now you're not devastated anymore. And, you know, Epictetus himself talks about test your impressions, the same concept there. So, so for me, I remember early on, one of the most powerful tools was this ABC theory. So yeah. when I encountered anything that was upsetting me, I started to look at the whole situation and say, can I interpret that more realistically or, or more, uh, you know, uh, efficiently in a way that's going to lead, you know, not to my happiness, not to distress. Mm.